Welcome back. Going to the second half here of Yield Drop Frames, the Boomer Show for Boomer folk. I don't know what that means. <laughs> the old guys. The old guys. Let's just rebrand the show. The old guys. Yeah. Actually, we don't need to rebrand it because no no Zoomers will do a talk show. <laughs> They'll do a podcast, but they won't they won't do a quote talk show. It's different. That's true. What's the difference between a, a podcast and talk show? Because they're uh, heavily Absolutely edited. Absolutely nothing. There's nothing. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that was the joke. The okay. Difference. The difference is marketing. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it? It's still talk show and podcast, right? Like that's the category on Twitch. They can they separate yeah, talk them shows as, and podcasts. Yeah. Which is that's okay. Um, let's not get into that. <laughs> that's, a, that's a whole nother thing let's talk about video games uh you guys want to start with steam next fest since you brought it up zeke i know you're playing a bunch sure. of those played some interested sure. to hear about them what have you guys checked out uh let's see well let's start at the beginning um the first game that i checked out on steam next fest uh do you just want to do game by game or do like an overview or like whatever you want if there's any big ones yeah, you want to touch do on game by game uh i I played a, a cognition method. I'll just do the highlights, the ones I really liked, and maybe give a little, a little uh, <laughs> shout out to the ones that were just hilarious or bad. Okay. Um, cognition method is a is a very promising, atmospheric, uh, gives you a portal esque kind of a feel. Um, I don't think it has a release date. No, it does not have a release date. Planned uh, planned release date to be announced, and that's that's a lot of this. It's a lot of no dates sometimes sometimes if you're lucky they'll give you a year you know they'll give you like 2023 or 2022 if you're really lucky but more often than not they don't give you a date or anything but uh what was the name it of this? was Sorry. a a cognition method okay um and it's it, all these are are free playable demos i think it's still going on today right it's this is the last day no no oh, till the 10th so we got you got two more days to check out any of the uh demos on steam next fest cool. um but, but this one was a really cool um atmospheric uh you know uh walk here place the box here take down the gate move on kind of a thing it's not modular i mean it is modular but it's not like set up to be modular like portal it's not like a puzzle game that knows it's a puzzle game like portal does um it's uh more dream like you don't know what's going on and then you like in the demo you get you get uh, piece together a story of where you are and what you're doing and uh it is like it's very immersive i will say that it's you're taken to a completely other place and it's it, it's done very well the graphics are good <clears throat> the sound design is good um the puzzles aren't like the ones that i uh, came upon aren't super difficult and uh, if you watch my VOD, you'll see me like probably take a little bit extra time on ones that are super duper easy because I overcomplicate things every time I look at stuff. I'll see a puzzle and go, it has to be this and then that. And then you go over there that, and it's really just honestly press this button and then move on. Mm. You know, <laughs> it's just, I do that all the time. But the puzzles weren't really like, super brain busting. Um, but they were cleverly cleverly laid out um like you have to get past that that red door barrier right and there's this uh funnel of light in the middle of the room that uh it within the funnel it uh swaps gravity so you float up to the ceiling and then you turn around and you're standing on the ceiling so there's a lot of that like gravity manipulation pick up the block put it there uh throw the block here that kind of shit. um but the main the main star of the of the demo is uh how uh the world that is built around you and uh the story that kind of um reveals itself over time cool and this is a demo right like this costs nothing to play right now all of yeah, these play, free, cool free playable demo yeah every every game from the steam next fest that i played uh has a playable demo great <laughs> and some of them shouldn't I'll just be honest with you. Ooh. Some of them should not. Okay. All right. <laughs> Some of them were not even ready for a demo. <laughs> <laughs> what's the next one? Is it uh, ready for a demo? What's what's the name? Of it? Uh, the next the next one is uh, 
definitely more uh, in my sort of genre. It's an FMV game called Case Files, The Death oh. of Paulette Williams. Um, now, this one is, uh, it, it's an interrogation, uh, kind of like her story. If you ever uh, saw or played that, it's kind of like that. Uh, but you are a- actively uh, talking to the detective um during the interrogation so he'll say like <laughs> he'll he'll talk to you over video or over the phone saying like okay we're going to bring in this person and we're going to talk about the the murder you just write everything down this is how the the cameras work and stuff like that so basically it's it's you watching an interrogation and you can see my notepad there i wrote those notes on that yellow pad um while watching the interrogation they're the uh, pertinent elements of the interrogation mm. and uh there are two cameras you can see below the main monitor. There's two like, you know, camera things. You can switch back and forth between those. One's a pulled back view and one's a close up view of the uh, interviewee. And uh, it's about this, uh, this lady who uh, was on hospice care. She had uh, stage four cancer and, and, uh, but she died. She didn't die of that. She died of a Oxycontin overdose. And you have to figure out like what the fuck happened. And, um, the people that you're interviewing are uh, their uh, daughter and her husband, who were their primary, uh, the primary caretakers of, of their mother. And I think, I honestly think it's, it's just a matter of like watching these interviews. And then on the second monitor, you can see on the left that's black. You can replay the interviews, fast forward, pause, all that kind of stuff, and look for, you know, I'm guessing they tell you how to spot lies or something like if they look away or if they do this or if they, you know, twiddle their thumbs or whatever the fuck, like, I'm guessing that happens later, but I, and the acting is actually, it's, it's pretty realistic. If you've ever seen like actual footage of cops interviewing suspects and stuff, it's seems like either he, the guy who was doing the interviewing was coached very well, or he's an ex, you know, cop or something. Because yeah. it sounds like a real interview. So that really added to it. It wasn't like cheesy, you know, uh, community theater acting. It was very much like kind of real. Yeah. And uh, it's intriguing. The demo was, I mean, obviously not too long. It was like 30 minutes. But uh, I'm, I'm actually excited to see where this goes because I really enjoyed her story. And I like the, uh, the idea of, you know, being inside the mind of like an interrogator and like looking for like spot, the, you know, Oh, she's lying. She touched her mouth. You know, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that that excites me. So it's it's wild. I'm, I'm, it's wild to me but, because this goes back to the whole first part. But React streamers, some of the biggest ones on the platform, will watch actual cop profiles like this on air that are on YouTube. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the boomer version is playing a video game, of yeah, that. right? <laughs> It's, well, the it's thing wild. is, like, that's just crazy about, right? to me. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a, it, uh, I don't know if it's a sign of the times or something, whatever, but like this, if I watch, when I watch like real interrogation, like uh, um, making a murderer, yeah. I was watching the like interrogation. Like, that, that's essentially I, what it, it is, yeah. It, it made me feel like super uncomfortable because oh, this yeah. is real people and real shit happening to them. Like, I can do these ones all day because this is all scripted and lines and, you know, it's fake. But like watching real police interviews, that's tough for me. It's sure, it yeah, makes me squirm in my seat and shit like that. So like, I don't know if that's a you thing or just a me thing, but I can't do real life stuff like that. At it's, all. I mean, it's pretty dark when they're like interviewing actual serial killers, <laughs> like yeah. going through the methods and everything that they. It's it's dark for sure. It's it's not light yeah. subject material, yeah. uh, and I could see how that would be like lessened uh, if you were to know it was a a video game rather than real life so oh for sure cool no i can watch anything on on if i know it's fake yeah like i, I can i can I, I can stomach just about everything if whether it's talking about a hypothetical situation or watching something you know questionable as long as i know it's fake like I, it doesn't bother me but once it once i know like someone is embarrassed or hurt especially or like, embar- died. like <laughs> yeah but it's honestly especially embarrassment mm. Like I have trouble watching like the, uh, like the, the daily show correspondents, like the daily show correspondents who go out and like 
act like they're stupid and talk to people and get them the people that are talking to you to reveal how stupid they are that shit i can't watch that it embarrasses me i'm just like oh why they're so dumb why are you taking advantage of them like that <laughs> sure yeah nowadays that's just content for for everyone i know man if i could if i could get rid of that i could make great content yeah channel channel five news does that that's exactly what that channel is wildly successful uh what was the next one zeke is it this one yes inkalinati inkalinati oh, oh i saw a, this how the hell do you it's actually that? a very charming and humorous it has a good sense of humor uh it's a, a it sort took a stab of, at the spelling tell me how wrong i am <laughs> it's ink it's ink luminati so like ink illuminati, illuminati. Oh. it's oh, oh. it's not no no that's what i thought too co there's no m in there it's not luminati it's not with an n inklunati ink i n k u l i n a t i inklunati okay. inklunati yep oh you're missing uh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. one u okay this i'm just gonna figure you keep talking i'll figure it out <laughs> that's all right <laughs> that's a rough one for spelling but uh it's a uh it's a take on it's 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 like a i want it's not like darkest dungeon it looks a little bit like it but uh on the, on the battlefield there are uh a set number of set number of slots on the battlefield and uh every you know uh character that you use occupies one of those spaces on the battlefield but you can cross over like it's not one side versus the other you can actually move to the other side and that's kind of the the object of the game is to kill the other person's um uh tiny tiny equilinati is what they call them um is their their captain of their team like that guy that's sitting there with a pen that's mine ah. so you have to hit him for 20 damage to win or you can shove him off the end of the board because there's a shove action so oh. you kind of like there it is um and it all takes place inside of like this giant storybook like that's where the battlefield is it's kind of like it reminds me of uh, those old bugs bunny cartoons where the artist is like drawing things on bugs bunny and he has to like fight that like you are a part of the battle like you put your finger on and you push people and shove them and stuff like that um but uh the main the main part of the main attraction for this is uh is like the sense of humor um one of the rabbits moves i'm not sure if the dogs have it but the rabbit one of the rabbits moves is um give them the butt and it's basically a rabbit it's like it's like a a debuff and the rabbit like takes down his pants and like shakes his butt and moons the other team or one of one of the players on the other team uh and it like gives them like uh accuracy down and that kind of stuff so it has you know he juvenile stuff butt. like that that i really enjoy yeah it gives them a butt yeah um but the thing is the thing is it's it's deceptively strategic like there's a deceptive amount of strategy because i played like one actual like after the tutorial was done after I, you know they tell you how to play the one battle that i did end up playing and finishing uh, i played it on like the hard whatever the hardest difficulty is i think there might be three or four different difficulties but i was just like let's see what it's like and i lost the first one like the very first battle i was like oh shit okay and then there's a like i said there's a surprising amount of strategy so i was like okay if i push him there put him between the barbecue weenie thing because there's like in in the first battle i battled there was a there were two like little like you know those half circle barbecues yeah with weenies on it mm. and it, it has five hp and it's just a it's just a, a static item and if you uh, hit it for five hp it blows up and anything on either side of it gets hit for five points of damage so you can shove that thing blow it up and then you know hit the other team uh something like that. but they're they're constantly moving on the other side of you and you're moving on the other side of them and stuff like that so there's you know a fair bit of thinking going into you know how to win and i was surprised by that i thought i was going to be you know here's your first battle oh you got him good job next <laughs> but right away it was just like oh okay so i can actually sit here and puzzle over what to do yeah there's some strategery at foot yeah yeah uh did it seem like there was a lot like uh, how long was the demo i guess compared to everything else uh, it's like a 30 minute deal an hour deal is it one match that you can kind of repeat 
This one was, it's, it says my playtime was 50 minutes. Okay. So I'm guessing it's it's somewhere between 30 and 45 minutes. Are the matches pretty, like how or, many matches? actually, you know, I, I actually quit after my first battle because I, I wanted to move on to the next thing. Yeah. Because I, once I get the idea, I'm like, okay, I know what this game is. You know, we'll look at it when it comes out. Yeah. But there were more battles. I think there was like, I, I want to say four or five battles that you could do oh. in the demo. So it does have a little bit of length on it. Cool. cool. Yeah. The next one was this. What's this? The, oh, this one. This one is called Go Home Annie. <laughs> How do you say with A N N I E? Yep. Yep. Annie, are you okay? Are you okay, Annie? Um, it's a twisted first person horror adventure as an employee of the SCP. It's an SCP game. Ah. Um, for those ooh. of you who don't know what SCP is, it's like control, uh, secure, contain, protect is what SCP stands for. It is for anomalous items that just like live in the world, like a, a banana that self replicates, it's just an anomalous thing. And this men in black kind of organization takes these items and contains them and studies them. And this one is uh, about the company that tries to replicate those items. Um, tries to make more copies of them, I guess. Um, and, and you are loaded. <laughs> yep, it's, it's awesome. It's really, really good. The thing, the thing that I really like about this one is uh, you are, you're not sure what, what the item or items are. You're just kind of plunked down because the SCP organization uh, canonically has, has hired death row people to test their shit. You know, they have like uh, people who uh, are on death row and they, they ask them if they want to volunteer to, to do this stuff. And they, yep, they absolutely do. And you play one of these people who has been uh, hired by the SCP and uh, you go into this house. And my first thought was, it's the entire house. The house is the SCP. <laughs> and then you, 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 your mind changes like, maybe it's not, maybe it's something else. Maybe it's this, maybe it's that. But one of the main mechanics of the demo is that they give you a video camera like right off the bat. And uh, there's differences between what you see and what the video camera sees. And I'll just leave it at that because it's a really good demo. And, and, and uh, uh, if you like that kind of mysterious SCP kind of world, it's a really good uh, game f for people of that uh, ilk. Cool. Yeah, is, and the, yeah. it, it says solve puzzles, but there weren't any puzzles that I saw, really. No. <laughs> it's more just of like, a, you know, explore. Um, there's no like real, you know what? I, I, I don't want to like spoil anything. It's pretty short, Yeah, but it's, it, it was very good. Very, very, uh, uh, another one of those that's very immersive. Um, and it's creepy, mm. eerie, x files -y. Yeah. Good. Cool. And I, this is one of those ones that when it comes out, I'm, I'm definitely, definitely playing it, at, uh, day one, if I can. All right. Let's go home, Manny. Oh, I know. I've seen uh, Lyric play this. I think he enjoys yes. this. Did you, it's a vampire survival clone. Auto shooter. Yeah. yeah. Is that is that what yeah. we're calling that? Uh, the, That's the, it's auto shooter. I I played another one called Vampire or not Vampire. Uh, Soulstone Survivors. I played okay. that demo. And chat chat informed. We we went over like what to call it because we didn't want to call it like a vampire survivors like or a survivors game. So apparently I was syllables. informed that <clears throat> I've been informed that that the the global term that is most being used is auto shooter. And I mm. really like that because that's exactly what these games are. Okay. They are literally okay. auto shooter. So I think that's, I think that's great. Or bullet heaven is another name that I think was kind of fun. Instead yeah. Of bullet bullet hell, where everything's coming yeah. towards you, bullet heavens, because everything going out. That deserves uh, auto shooters. But I kind of like auto shooter yeah. better because that describes the mechanics more. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. Bullet hell's more like, do you know, or bullet heavens. Like, do you know what bullet hell is? Then. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I kinda like I kinda like auto shooter. Yeah. What's the name of this one? There are a lot of these gold. Now. <laughs> yeah, yeah there is a lot. There is a lot. Uh it's called Rogue Genesia. Uh Rogue, just like Rogue, and G E N E S I A. Got it. Um and it's it's uh, it, this is an easy one to explain. It's exactly what you see on the box, except uh the progression is a I always use Slay the Spire. 
like I use the slay the spire like choose one of three tree. Yeah, you can go like you know a branching oh, oh, path. Oh, that okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a branching path because that's I that's all I see is like you start it you start at one spot you beat it and then it has like a branch you can and you can go to like a skull a question mark or a treasure box and then the next one has a couple of branching paths and so on and so forth um but that's the that's the difference the main difference between uh this and like vampire survivors is that it has a progression and an eventual boss at the end of the progression um it it's very much uh you grab the grab the xp gems enough you level up you pick a new weapon or upgrade a current weapon so on and so forth uh i actually played a little bit of this on my own time um i finally like the the final boss in the because this game is fully released oh fuck, that's right this game fuck, i'm sorry this is not a person next fest i apologize oh okay but, it does have a demo uh, though, so it did have whatever. a free demo yeah, it's got a demo it works it's fine yeah it, it has free demo which is why i'm talking no about it actually you can play doesn't. it freak off the show <laughs> you're done that was what? final straw you're done. you can't inform the audience like that straw yeah. yeah this was the next fest segment i'm naming names as i go out the door you better not you better <laughs> i'm calling you out i'm revealing secrets uh <laughs> yes we're gonna get some yeah, viewers okay. now you know what <laughs> completely <laughs> unrelated <laughs> reason completely unrelated reason you're on the show again just you know what? Good. please stay you're, 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 please Zig's please don't back. go Please don't, hey, you get a Please don't go anywhere. You're, uh, yeah, well, go you, do you have any friends that want to come on, Zeke? We'd love to have come them. on back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, the, uh, as far as Rogue Genius goes, it, it does have a free playable demo. Yeah. The, the boss in the in the core game, because I it's only three bucks, um, just like uh, you know, a la Vampire Survivors. And I got price. to the I got to the end of the first. What I think is hopefully like the first boss in the game hopefully yeah. there's more but um he was fucking hard yeah like you get up there and he is really difficult and a, just a fucking damage sponge and i got a build going that actually uh worked and i it was a viable salute and i just it took a while but i got him down and it was really satisfying because i i had faced him a couple times before and I don't think I even got him to a quarter health down. Yeah. But I got a I got a good like uh uh turtley build, like a, a nice uh, armor build going and I could I could take lots and lots of damage. Um I wasn't doing a ton, but I was doing enough. And I finally got the first boss down. I was like, "Jesus Christ, that guy was fucking hard." And that kind of made it like really uh, you know, made me want to play more. Yeah. Because if it's, you know, the difficulty of it really spikes and it's satisfying um also the the music is great in it uh i would suggest that turning the music up and leaving the sound effects at 50 percent because it, it starts at both at 50 turn the music up to 100 percent and leave the sound effects at 50 because there's like vampire survivors a lot of sound effects in it because a lot of shit's happening yeah um and the other benefit of streaming this is it didn't kill my bit rate nearly as much as vampire survivors does true yeah. vampire survivors crushes my bit rate it's a pixelated mess by the end of like 20 minutes makes sense um a lot of also the uh go ahead i was gonna say a lot of people said these are the the best steam deck games so i might grab this oh one sure to play oh totally seems like um, it'd be a good time the other thing that i liked about this is it's the it's more modular than uh vampire survivors so it's like survive for a minute and a half kill a thousand monsters which is less than you think uh especially i mean you can see like how many are coming at you it, it, it's over pretty fast so yeah. it's like do this you get a nice pause whereas vampire survivors is like if you get to the end it's 30 minutes it's full 30 minutes you know unless you do like the halftime 15 minute thing yeah but these are very very like short little levels that you can you know beat and then take a break go to get a treasure chest go to the shop whatever move on so on and so forth sounds good probably get this would you would you say that is this better than vampire survivor or is vampire survivors king for you you know i haven't done a lot in this yet okay. um oh oh my i guess my stream went offline <laughs> my my chat is effing but oh 
Really? Probably, the stream is probably good. Anyways, um, I haven't revealed a lot, I don't think. Because the fun of Vampire Survivors for me was discovering all of the weapons and discovering organically, not looking up, but discovering organically all of the uh, uh, evolutions of the weapons or whatever, the, whatever you call it mechanically. When you combine uh, a weapon and a sub weapon and they make a new thing. Like that was fun. Um, I'm not sure if they have that in this, but I haven't played that much. I've only played two hours of it so far. So I'm, and there's tons of unlocks. Like for in two hours of playing this, um, I think that, oh God. Oh, they're not Steam achievements. Achievements kept popping up in this game. Yeah. Steam kept popping up achievement, or the game kept popping up achievements over and over and over again. Like <laughs> it was like, I want to say in two hours I unlocked like maybe twenty different achievements. Um, so I'm wondering like how much of that is tied to unlocking new things and new weapons and stuff like that. So I'll report back after I played it for a little bit longer. Got it. People are working on your stream. But the Steam achievements, there's only four Steam achievements. <laughs> Yeah, I'll probably, I mean, it's, th it's what, three bucks? Aren't they all like a, three bucks. they're all pretty cheap. Yeah, I'll probably, real cheap. Probably just grab it. Seems like it's easily easy. worth it to me. I'm going to play some more later. Cool. Cool. Uh, let me move forward. I think this was the next one. What's this? Ooh, this one. Uh, this one is called Loretta. Just like the name. In fact, it is the name of the main character. One R, two R. Um, one R. One R, one R, two T's. Um, this one is, uh, it says, it's a psychological thriller that makes the player an, ac an accessory to the heroine's crimes and leads her through a, a self-crafted nightmare. Stories about a woman dealing with betrayal, her husband's infidelity, relationship problems, and the difficult social, social situation of the 1940s. Um, so this takes Jesus. place in 1947, and uh, it's right at the, right at the beginning they go they give you a little warning and basically the warning says tldr is 1940 suck for women and we're gonna talk about that and talk in the fashion that that it was like for them and uh, we hope we don't get uh you don't get offended by it okay. i'm getting double that's because you have your stream open <laughs> how did that unpause i didn't unpause that <laughs> i'm glad that i met weird. god yes i feel that's very good feel right there <laughs> no i i that's what i automatically would have assumed anyway that's what i automatically was until like earlier today you Zeke were doing that one thing where i can viewer. hear myself through your thing <laughs> through your mixer yeah no it's it's probably because the stream uh reinitialized and went live so it's You're probably, probably exactly oh that's what it was because i f right yeah. okay yeah, that's yeah. what happened yeah. anyway Loretta, <laughs> beautifully written and told point and click game about um, uh, this housewife yeah. who has uh, she she left she left she uh, lives in the south. They don't I don't know if they ever specify what part of the south, but she lives in the south of the United States. Moves to had moved to New York when she was 16 and then came back when she met her husband in New York and they came back here because he, he came back here to write. He's a writer. Mm. And uh, it's about her uh, hopes and dreams and not wanting to just be a housewife. And that's kind of like one of the things you have to do as a wife in the 40s, you know, is be a good wife, cooking and cleaning and all that stuff. And she doesn't want to do that anymore. And how she reacts to that is pretty brutal, and and uh, you know, kind of like kind kind of understand, like get a little over the top, but like I get why you did it and stuff like that. And it's also very there's there's a lot of um, dreamlike uh, uh, sections of the game where uh, just for, just as an example, there's these words uh, flying from the outsides of the screen to left and right of the screen towards the center 
and you have to like basically like click on them before they hit the center. That's the the gameplay of it. But yeah. the words are like um uh, like loneliness, uh, uh, hopes, dreams, fate, that kind of stuff. And it's a it's a beautiful story, very atmospheric. I will say there's one part of the game that I goddamn want every single developer to hear me when I say, please, please, please don't put annoying sounds or repetitive sounds in the first part of your game in a place that we have to stay for a while because there is a fucking clock that click that ticks louder than fucking uh, a rock concert just tick 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 and you have to like read all these lines and go like stop doing that this is a trope <laughs> this is something that happens in a few games that i played recently stop it if it's annoying noise maybe make it annoying for a little bit so we know that it's annoying and then fade it back or turn it off completely yeah like make it go like tick 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 and then then in the background that's fine anyways that was the only complaint i had about this game um okay. it's not for everybody i'm sure most most gamers would like you have to be like a, a someone who enjoys story and point and click um if you if it's not universal i wouldn't say it would be universally uh recommended to just anybody it would be like did you like uh like disco elysium or did you like like you know story rich point and click with not a lot of action then you'll like this because it's it's really well done for what it is and uh the uh um i was gonna say the voice acting but i did all the voices because <laughs> there's no voice acting <laughs> but i had a blast doing them because the lines are great anyway cool. I'm, I'm i'm excited for when it comes out coming soon is is it's another one of those coming soon no date no year but i will say shout out to the developer Yakov butts off. It's a good name. <clears throat> Strong name. Mm -hmm. Strong name. Strong name. Uh, one or two more. This one. I'm going to guess this is called Stray Souls. <laughs> is that correct? Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is what it's called Stray Souls. Now, uh, I've taught this. Uh, let me see. Is there any more that I want to. No, let, 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 let this be the last one. Okay. Um, that I talk about because this one is one of those ones that man looking at it boy it has a lot of potential but fuck it was not ready dude it was very dark a glitchy fucking mess it, it, if we can if, if we see it there are parts where it is what well, they drop you in this place and they don't tell you much of anything the first scene is like you behind this, you're the main character in third person view and him on the phone. And before he talks, he just like, he like throws a stick. He's pissed. And there's, there's, he doesn't throw it angrily. He just throws it like casually. And it, it, it just kind of sets up the whole, like the whole like idea, like the, the whole feeling of the game. Like, why'd you do that? Why did you go through the process of animating you tossing that stick? It is not a plot point. You got to get to the ending, it. man. You got to get to the ending. It all makes sense. It all loops <laughs> back. I got to the ending of the demo and it did still did not. They didn't mention the stick. He just like picks up the <laughs> stick and tosses it. And that's all left me. I mean, it might be a little thing to most of you, but it left me going, why the fuck do they bother animating that? Yeah. Um, but you, uh, it's, it's very much, um, like uh resident evil third person in this uh or silent hill like you're in this uh spooky playground public park kind of thing that like some of the things in this park kind of give you an idea of did the developers like or do they know what they were doing because <laughs> the, there's a there's a playground with children like a slide children's toys slide a merry-go-round it's about the fence is about four feet high, four and a half feet high. Okay. And it has barbed wire around the top of it because Russia, <laughs> because that's what they do. Because it, all the, all the, all the signs Jesus. are in Russian. Um, the important ones are in English. Like the ones you have to read clue wise are in English, but all of the, like the stock posters, you know, on the, on the wall set dressing are all in Russian. Yeah. Um, but there's a playground barbed wire over it. 
And guess guess what? I'll give you one guess as to what they put right next to the playground playground in this public park area. Yep, it's a graveyard. Um, oh, they put okay. a fucking graveyard right next to it. Sure. For some reason, I don't know. Um, and uh, we find out that it's that it's this main character's birthday, and he gets he's on a call with somebody. I think it's his sister saying like, "Hey." Look up in the sky. I made a surprise for you. And you look up over this gloomy Russian sky, gray clouds and darkness everywhere. Fireworks. <laughs> we saw the fireworks a little bit, yeah. What's, why is that bird just stuck? <laughs> why, best, why, are the, why are there cops here? Not to ask. Best, they're not there. They're, those are rangers. And oh, they're not park really rangers. there. They're just, they're just cars that are, that are parked there. Oh, um, okay. But your sister... Uh, has made you a firework show and tells you about it over the phone. As you do. Right. I mean, how many times, like, that, that's obvious. Obviously, on my birthday, my girlfriend calls me from a, a secret location and, and shows me fireworks <laughs> from miles away. Yes. Um, and that, yeah. And then, uh, let's talk about, like, the actual game glitches. Eventually, you move, uh, by the way, you have to spend... A few minutes uh moving shopping carts away from those ranger vehicles so you can check inside of them and see if there's you know anything useful mm -hmm. so you take the shopping carts and you move them away there's four of them and uh, they are really heavy you have to put your shoulder into them and then you get into the cop car uh the ranger vehicle uh like fred flintstone <laughs> the seats have no collision it's basically you step into them and you stand in them and you go through the seat. <laughs> they haven't gotten to that animation there. yet. That that's in past seven, Zeke. We're on it, past three. It, it yeah. is so good. Someone said Fred Flintstone. I lost my shit. I started laughing until I was like just leaking, crying, just because he just steps in and he stands there inside the vehicle and then he gets back out again. Um, that was glitch number one. Yeah. Um. Another funny thing, glitch number two, is they tell you to check the garbage cans. Uh, one of the notes says, uh, I, left, I left your gun in a garbage can. Go find it. <laughs> to one, uh, seemingly two employees of this park, talk, yeah. park rangers talking to each other. And uh, so you check a garbage can. The first garbage can I checked, oh, there's the gun. But you check the other ones. Oh, where's the gun? God, it's got to be here somewhere. So. Uh, you, you check the garbage can even after you found the gun because you need a second gun. I, I, I'd imagine. Um, Gotta go the in. The second glitch. Them. Oh, yeah. You do. The other glitch that uh, I had to reset the game was just, just your average um, interaction point that never resolves itself. So you interact with something that's interactable and then you're just stuck. Your character can't, can't move, can't go anywhere. I was stuck in like with nothing blocking me because what I'm guessing is the game sh is still trying to resolve the interact that wasn't supposed to be able to be hit. So I had to reset the game and fun, fun fact at the beginning of the game, they tell you this demo doesn't have saves. So if you quit the game, you'll have to start from the beginning again. And that was fun. That was really fun. Cool. Um, okay. For a game that looked like it had so much potential. God damn. It was hilarious. With all of, and I, I asked the Dell, don't, don't change a thing. Just add more content. Okay. Do not change a thing because the charm of this game will wear very thin if you take that, all the funny <laughs> shit out. All right. Yeah. Stray Souls, demo available now. If you want to, for some reason. Bada boom. There you go. Co, <clears throat> what'd you check out on the old Steam Next Fest or your heavy um, I stupidly deleted. Um, games as I off my desktop as I played them. I played a game called Astiergos. It was kind of um, a game like Solstice. It was it was pretty fun. Had a good time with that one. It's kind of a Souls like game. Um, let's see, I did. I know I played some games where I finished them. I was like, wish I'm wishing wish listing this immediately. Dredge I played the fishing game Dredge. That was super cool. Uh, Dredge is basically about like a, it's it's a fishing game. It has all sorts of weird stuff going on in the city like you catch these weird mutated fish and it like unlocks a story and the town doesn't really want you there um 
that one was kind of wild. Uh, played a game called Scars Above, which is basically like Returnal, essentially. Scars Above was really cool. I, I really enjoyed that one. Um, we played a game called Forever Skies, which is essentially, uh, as the dev who dropped in my chat said, it's basically Skynautica. So wow. it's, it's basically like the world ends and, and humanity is like brought up into space. And then they have to go back down to the planet and they, and you basically have to like build a blimp and like fly between like derelict buildings and, and build this instead of a raft, you're building a blimp. And, um, that was actually really cool. I, I was, I was pretty bummed when that demo time limit ran out. Um, it wasn't really part of steam next fest, but I, uh, I was playing the early access of backpack hero, which is an amazing game. Had a great time with that. And uh, it was that. so good. I loved, loved backpack hero. And I think that was yeah. all the big ones. I, I, oh, I played uh, this game called Earth from Another Sun, which was really, like, it was, it was, it was kind of an interesting premise, but it was really weird. Um, like, it, it, had, it, it felt like a game that was made by people that don't really know what, like, what gamers want from games, but they knew, like, all the <laughs> components. And then, as I was getting close to the end, where I was kind of like, okay, I kind of know what this is, somebody linked me a page where they were like, yes! We are doing NFTs, and here's why. And I just was just like, no, oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. no, okay. That that Get explains that, that whole thing. <laughs> yeah, that explains that whole thing. Um, so I was done with that. And uh, after that, I I played a couple like scary demos. Um, and that kind of got me. This is dredge, yeah. And that kind of got me in a in my in my normal October mood to start playing like scary games. Um, this was also around the time. Like I had a bunch more demos that I wanted to try, like uh, Manor Lords and Zero Zephyrt. Like I heard Aquatico Manor Lords and, is really good. Yeah, I have two, but the, but they're all games that require like a lot of thinking and investment. Also, like Street Fighter was this weekend. I was thinking about playing that, but again, it takes so much brain power. And unfortunately, as does a lot. As most people know right now, uh, my cat is is missing. My cat left us missing, and what that's done is it's made it so I don't really want to think about anything. I just want to like get immersed and kind of get lost in games for now. So sure. I've been doing like a lot of immersive Sims. And um, that led me to the game I'm playing now that I actually, I, I found this game kind of off, off chance a couple days ago. And, and I was like, oh, this looks kind of cool. Let me play it. It's called Phobia. Oh. What Phobia mm -hmm. is, is a first person Resident Evil slash Silent Hill puzzle slash story horror game. And I have been really, really enjoying this game. Uh, it, is, it, is, it is interesting. Puzzles are fun. There's tons of exploration. There's it rewards you for looking all over the place. There is uh, there's shooting uh, shooting elements. The story is actually intriguing. Um, like it's been really really interesting. So I've I've played a couple days of Phobia, and I think I'm gonna keep playing it tomorrow. I don't I have no idea how long it is. I'm just loving the ride. It kind of bounces between time. There's cult elements. There's sci-fi elements. There's a lot of horror elements. Um, it's been really really cool. It came out I think a couple years ago. Went totally under the radar. Um, by a Brazilian company, and um, it's great. Like I'm, I'm actually really, really. But that's kind of where I am coming off my my week long grounded kick. Yeah, plus hours in there. So, I've uh, yeah. well, um, before we get, get to ground. Before we get on that, I want to ask you about. Uh, it looked like there was like screen tear. Is that a problem in this game or not? I didn't have any of that. I, I actually just noticed that for the first time when watching this video. Oh, okay, I've had no screen Must be tear just on my thing, side. Okay. That's a streamer yeah, nightmare. It, it, <laughs> yeah well a lot of times i won't see the screen tear that my car does so yeah. i you know have to play with that every so often no one's been complaining about it in chat so okay you know, now that they've seen it, is, it. yeah mm -hmm. we'll we'll fix it tomorrow it's, it's always <laughs> just an issue of it's always just an issue of turning on v-sync and locking it to 144 and you're good to go so yeah, yeah that's exactly right. i just didn't do it on this yeah you said you've been playing this one for a couple of days it's got some some yeah to it. i'm like Five hours in and still going strong, man. It's it's been uh, it's been it's been a lot of fun. A lot of, lot of cool puzzles, a lot of exploration, a lot of very weird things that happen. It's it's a it's a very solid game. I'm very surprised I hadn't heard about it. Cool. And again, I just happened to off and find it. Nobody recommended it to me or anything. I just kind of like found it when going through the horror section on Steam. So it was uh, wild. I played it uh, in July. It looks like for about an hour and a half. And uh, it's one of those ones that, that I'm glad you reminded me of because it's, it's one of those ones like, we're going to have to go back to that. Never it's, did. I say that so fucking often. <laughs> oh, yeah. Especially on oh, Indie yeah. Day. Like, all right, we're going to switch games, but I'm going to come back to this one. I promise. Yeah. 
Uh, Phobia is currently 20% off, running $23.99 on Steam if you want to grab it. Uh, let's talk Grounded. I've, Grounded seems... I I have I only played it in early access, but it seems from everyone that I have seen play it over the past week and change, however long it's been out, it seems like one of the best, if not the best survival game out there. But how you... Yep. Yeah, you, you agree? Just That's what it is. Okay. I, I agree wholeheartedly. It has, it has a huge world with tons of stuff in it. Like there's secrets and things to do everywhere. Huge tech tree and interesting way to progress down it. Lots of creative building, a story that takes you all around the map. Um, just it it is it is a great example of a um, of a game that really killed it in early access. Like they took a ton of feedback throughout early access on how to make the game better and how to and what players wanted, and they, they clearly listened. And it would be probably one of the best survival games ever, but there's no sorting, so that makes it okay. <laughs> I saw your tweet about that, dude. You can't sort the inventory. You can't. Here, here's the thing. They or have auto some sort of the, the inventory. They have some incredibly great QOL. So if you build a wall of chests and you stand in front of it and you hit the N key, it will automatically put all of your items that are stacked in there, just like in Terraria. Oh, that's sick. Okay. If you build Makes a workbench sense. near those chests and you use the workbench, it'll actually say you are near 18 chests and all of the stuff you're building is being taken from those chests. Great. Awesome. If you are loading up like a forge or an oven with stuff, it will take it from the chests and put it in there. Phenomenal. There is no sorting in chests and there is no sorting in your inventory. And what's even worse is in your inventory, at least you have this thing called defrag. So if you have a stack of five arrows and a stack of six arrows and you click the defrag button, it'll move them into a stack of 11. But throughout the course of the game, you get to upgrade your ability to make your stacks larger. So you start at 10, then 15, then 20, then 25, then 30. Well, you don't get the option to defrag your storage. So as you, and your storage stacks stay that way. So oh. if you upgrade from 10 to 15, well, your storage doesn't intelligently combine your stuff and you can't defrag it. You have to manually go in and move stuff on top of each other and move around. It is, for a game like this, it is one of the biggest boneheaded moves I've ever seen from the company's <laughs> experience as Obsidian, which is wild because so much of the rest of the game is so good and it's so well made and it's so like clearly awesome. So it is, it blows my mind um, that they they did not put any kind of sorting in a game like this, especially considering they come with a hugely girthy RPG background and they have tons of amazing ways to sort in those games. So it's like they know how to do it. They know what's up. You know, yeah. they know players want it. Um, yeah, it's wild. It's wild. I hope it's the kind of thing where it just gets patched, patched in one in. day. But yeah, but yeah it, you gotta it, it add was... length to the game somehow, man. I mean, I dude with uh, seriously, I I gave up on sorting. I didn't I didn't sort manually. I just didn't sort, and it just constantly frustrated me the whole time. You don't <laughs> need to sort. And to be fair, the the stuff that makes the playability, the the stuff that makes it so you know you actually save time, that stuff's in the game. So the, you know, the end to sort everything, all of your, your workbenches using inventory nearby, like that's the stuff that would actually waste time. Sorting doesn't really waste time, which is one of the reasons I'm guessing they didn't prioritize it. Sorting is there mostly just to give you that little dopamine hit whenever you sort your inventory, which feels so good. Yeah. Which is, yeah. don't get me wrong, it's important. Um, but it never, it doesn't really help you save time. They did put in the things that help you save time. So, you know, credit where it's doing that. regard. And it's wild seeing this. This is the first time I've seen the base. I ended up, making it was pretty early on quite a large base yeah, yeah I, so I was i forgot how basic it started i was going through your uh youtube and you're at like episode 175 it took, it took me 80 plus hours <laughs> jesus yep. yeah that's uh it's a good good amount for a survival and it, it's like story complete right there's actual goals oh things it's, there is it's not, not only just, let's not wander only around complete. and kill some <clears throat> stuff tons of dialogue Actual, every, every major location is like a story thing with logs and, and lore and things of that nature. There is a good and bad ending. Really? There's that, a good and bad ending to the game. Absolutely. Is that uh, and good and bad in what <clears throat> sense? Like a good ending in terms of it's a good ending or like a good natured ending, if you know what I'm saying. Good ending as in things ended well for okay. most of the players involved or bad ending as in things could have been a whole lot better. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And um, that's and based on enough, what you do? 
in the game? It's not only based on what you do, it's based on locations you explore and in slight spoilers, but it's based on like doing an incredibly difficult encounter if you're playing solo on hard. Awesome. Um, like it was, it was, it, it made it very meaningful for sure. That's cool. That's cool. Um, how, so obviously spiders, that's my relationship with this game. Uh, yeah. Are they the scariest thing in the game? Is there worse? Um, I, I, I guess scary is relative to the person. <clears throat> yes, there there are lots of different spiders you didn't see in early access. That's fun. I've seen a handful are, on just streams, but yeah. Yeah, there are some other very large creatures. Some of the boss fights are really cool. Like they're they're not straightforward by any means. Like they're you know, you're running around the arena, there's multiple phases, like it 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 gets kind of almost MMO-y in some ways of 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 what you have to do to succeed. Nice. Um, and especially again, solo on hardest, there were some like 20 plus attempt boss fights, like not, and there's some bosses I haven't finished yet. Wow. Um, I'm kind of going to plan to go back and at some point and kind of do some probably cozy streams and grounded and try some of the bosses. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's the full package, man. It's got, it's got, if you're a survival game player, like this is, this is pretty much an easy, an easy recommend. Yeah. It's one of the best available. Uh, is the, I'd say you... it's the best, but no sorting. I can't possibly say that without <laughs> no, sorting. Sorry. Gotcha. Okay. Gotta wait for the sorting before it becomes. Gotta wait for the sorting. Yeah. Yep. Um, I know you played single player, but multiplayer just as good. Have you have you heard any complaints about it? Uh, or any negatives? I, negative I about haven't it? heard any negatives about the multiplayer. Okay. I think during early access there were some multiplayer issues, but I'm I'm pretty sure that most of them got ironed out. Um we'd have to kind of go from chat i know it's also crossplay too which is kind of cool but oh that's cool um we'd have to that. we'd have to talk to somebody who really spent more time playing multiplayer but yeah yeah i i i didn't test that too early myself yeah i watched uh, <clears throat> the late shift play a good chunk of of their uh grounded session um and they were in areas like i when i played it was so early on they were in like a desert area or something sandbox with like, yeah with like a giant castle that was there yep. and sandbox uh, they were in some water stuff with, uh, with like just Dude, they added are, like so much there are stuff ton, oh there are tons of biomes now there's there's a swamp pond sandbox you got like uh in in locations there's various different ant hills termite hills all sorts of things there's tons of large structures like um uh you know like lawn mowers and castles and and there's there's so much to the game there's tons of underground labs and and dare like science things and it's it's a huge huge game yeah cool yeah. yeah the the spider stuff is is probably what'll keep me away from it to be honest i was watching uh on like day one i was watching you play a little bit i was watching uh lyric play a little bit uh and like i, I was in and then he would turn a corner and there'd be like an orb weaver just hanging out i was like fuck man <laughs> like i can't I can't do that yeah thing. Even and it it spoke to me that like even lyric had to turn on the arachnophobia mode and that guy plays horror games just every single fucking day like no problem but for whatever reason the spiders yeah. was getting to it so it just reinforced it for me that I got to sure. nope out of there this this would um, be my like nope tober game if I were to play it oh, yeah. it's like not even oh, yeah. spooky for people <laughs> you're just walking around in a in a backyard and it's it's terrifying with how many spiders. by uh by the end of the game I had a giant straight wall. It had um, bounce pads behind it so I could go straight up the wall. I didn't have to go forward or anything. I could just go straight up. Nice. And it went to the top of this, like, platform, and I just had zip lines to, like, every major part of the map. Oh, that's cool. So you cool. can just go to the base. And then in a few key places, I had zip lines that would actually go back to the base. So I basically, like, built my own fast travel system in the game, which is so cool when they give you the tools to do that, um, especially considering there's no fast travel. So uh, it, was, it was a very, very cool experience. A lot of uh, upgrade stuff available in terms of just things you can craft armor you can craft all not that. not only is there a huge amount of stuff to craft but then all of it can be ranked up there's a new rank up and level up system where not only can you raise the levels of things making them better but in some cases you get to choose like how they get better like if they get oh, a wow. special effect on them you get like a little added bonus or if they get stronger defense um there are things that you know let you breathe longer underwater let you swim water longer upper water there's god 10 plus different armor sets. They all have different stats. And, and if you have a full set, you get a bonus on top of that. So, I mean, it's just, wow, it's huge. That's awesome. It's huge. Yeah. Yep. Zeke, I know you play a lot of these games offline uh, in terms of like Valheim in the past and things like this. Is this on your radar for the offline game? You know, I, I looked at it and it's, it's 
honestly just the the environment and stuff it's just it's not for me it's not it's not because it's uh, any like spiders or anything like that it's just because it's not appealing to me i guess okay um when i i don't know when i play survival games like it it helps if it's more on the realistic side rather than the the cartoony side i suppose sure i don't know it's it's hard to it's hard to explain it's just it's one of those like taste things it's not bad like i'm looking at it doesn't look like a bad game doesn't it looks like it you know functions just like most other survival games but it just doesn't appeal to me aesthetically yeah area i'm the same way about mmos i have a really hard time getting to mmos if i feel like they're kind of cartoon shame on you guys for having opinions and things that you like like <laughs> I know. it's insane honestly we're that. dicks i know day, i dicks. just can't believe you would have an yeah. opinion and like a thought for that type of it's insane it's, to me you stupid thought haver <laughs> how dare you yeah uh so that's uh, what is grounded is it i know it's on game pass which is how you should probably play this but can you just outright buy grounded is it a 60 dollars game like what are they i don't even know what they're charging for this in full let's see um I, yeah it is it is a game pass game and um go to steam what do they charge you for it 30 oh it's 40 bucks 40 bucks yeah which is a it's it's easily a 60 dollar game yeah it seems like it. it seems like there's enough content there so cool that's grounded co's got 180 episodes that are 30 minute a piece if you want to watch a 80 Loved hour minute. playthrough or something. not even not even not even done with it didn't even do everything Loved crazy every of it. crazy if you want to check that out well Speaking of that, just just I just want to mention real quick that I finally went back. I don't know if we we probably didn't talk about. It. I, I went back to Subnautica. No, was that during when I was on break? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I was just looking cuss? for f- for some reason survival games. Like I I, I always panned them. I was like, man, they're not they're just not good for streaming for me because I I'm always just zoned out. You know, yeah. it's a great like you know when I want to relax after a stream it's good like good shut your brain off kind of a thing sure um and i went back to subnautica and i played it and then i got to the credits I, I had the credit roll yeah um i built all the stuff that was necessary and did it and that's a lot so Subna- we're talking was, subnautica one right not below yeah yeah whatever not the, below zero no yeah, below i never zero. i never finished the first one um and it was because uh i didn't allow it to grab me i didn't allow it enough time to grab me um i played it for a few hours and i was like Ugh, it's so time consuming it's not like running around and stuff but after i got over that initial hump after i got over the initial hump of having zero vehicles and zero locomotion like help yeah after i got some good locomotion and you know ways to travel yeah yeah made it made it so much better and man is it a good game like after that if you can get past that hump i think they should start you with that fucking handheld thingy whatever that's called <laughs> yeah. they should fucking start you with that it is a game changer they, honestly uh, they start you just swimming and it's so fucking arduous and time consuming and boring that's not only a great idea but they should start you with one and since they have a limited battery life like ah. have the player know like this is how fast you could go if you put the time into it. Like give give the player a little taste of like you can work to this. Sure. It's not hopeless. Yeah. <laughs> like because yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about, man. That that first yeah. that first couple hours before you get like upgraded fins, upgraded air, like stuff like that. It's uh it's slow going. Rough. Pretty rough. Yeah. 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 Oh, you, that, dude, like, you need to play below zero. You should. It's good. I heard it's not even like not the same, and it's uh, like I've heard it's I've heard great not I think bad it's good. things, but like meh things about it <laughs> it's definitely different i will tell you right now as a subnautica okay. fan it's awesome and great like, i i, I think it's likes, great too the way you just talked about subnautica leads me to believe you will absolutely like below zero absolutely okay. and they, they have new things it's it's not it's not the same like oh tech tons tree. of new things yeah, yeah there's, there's a, whole a lot of new stuff yeah. you right. go you go above ground for a lot of it which is cool and they do yeah. it pretty well yeah I, but just going back to the like what I really liked about Subnautica that I didn't get into the first time I played it was the un- the the unraveling story because you don't get much story until you have a way to move around and sure, then once yeah. you have a way to move around you can start you start collecting the story bits and that was cool yeah yeah 
good story too. I think I think yeah. uh, Subnautica okay. nails the one thing that that game does better than everything else is is the idea of exploration uh and the deeper that you get the i guess like the feeling of isolation that exists as you just go deeper and deeper into the ocean i haven't played a game quite like that uh where it just you it gets just more stress like the stress just continues to add on as you see that depth get lower and lower and lower and may lower. i present you outer wilds jp i've 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 <laughs> never honestly it started that game i've heard uh it talked yeah. about to death but i've never actually started it give it a try man yeah. yeah there's definitely that like loneliness and then panic and and a little bit of like a light touch of terror yeah at, at, at times and it's really good uh, I actually ended up, I, I, I just, out of curiosity, I want to see, uh, I got 16 of the 17 achievements in Subnautica. So I did, I, I did a good, a good bit of exploring in the game Damn. and I did it until, until the very last thing, the very fucking last like collection thing they have you do. Okay. And I was like, I, at that point I was like, you, 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 you. you you worked hard now finish it you know like <laughs> sure like I'm trying to think wait, and, what, what it is it like, you're referring okay, to? okay before we end we have to have you make something um oh and you have oh. to you have to you have to find this like these ingredients most of which you've come across but if you if you missed one of them you gotta go back you yeah. don't know where the fuck it is yeah so you just got to fucking blindly wander <laughs> if you missed one or you never collected it or you never saw it or whatever yeah. you have to fucking blindly wander around until you find it and i said fuck that i looked up the coordinates and i went directly to that place it was like this one little fucking plant thing i never like came upon it or scanned it or whatever and if i hadn't looked it up that would have been <laughs> hours of boring wandering trying to find that shit yeah True. What was your uh, what was your favorite Leviathan? Without saying too much about said Leviathan for folks who have not played Subnautica. Um, I guess a name works fine because you're not going to describe it. Although the names are descriptive, I guess. Favorite is hard to, hard to say because their there's their personalities are different, so different. Um, I love a good jump scare, and you know which one I'm talking about. Yeah, that one's a mother. That one's fun to watch people experience. It sucks. Your first experience. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. Especially if you don't Thankfully, know. What's coming. It's probably in a clip out there. I played Subnautica on stream. Like the first time I ever played it. Yeah. Uh, for a couple of hours. You just wandered. And, and found it. my first experience is on, is on stream uh, on a clip somewhere. I'm sure. Yeah. Of that. I'm just going like, yeah, just, you know, it's one of those clips. Like you're talking to chat. Cause it's Subnautica. You know, there's not much happening. Like, down a mow! Man, they nailed the animation. It grabs you. Yeah. It grabs you good. Yeah. Uh, Sacriel's got a good reaction to that. If you've never seen uh, Sacriel's playthrough of Subnautica, mm -hmm. it's worth watching him freak out uh, <laughs> for someone who's usually cool, calm, collected. He's yeah. not in that. That's <laughs> that's his, uh, I think that's a, his, probably his biggest uh, nightmare is, that, is playing that game. So cool. I'm glad he went back to it. It's good. Uh, I can talk a little bit about the old Street Fighter Six beta. Is that? Yeah, tell uh, me about it. I, I'm seeing it everywhere, but I I heard that people like <laughs> we're, we're doing the, like I suck your dick for a beta. It I'm it like, is extremely. I I had to get mine from a viewer. Um, the a viewer sent me their code who uh, was traveling or something this weekend, and so I was able to uh, to get in through that. It is a extremely limited, probably I saw like a hundred thousand going around in terms of people that were actually able to get in. Um, they did a, a creator, uh, like content creator pass, I think like Tuesday morning or, or Wednesday morning to give out some keys, um, for that. But other, other than that, it was extremely limited. Um, in terms of the actual game, uh, I think this game is fantastic. I'm pretty bad at it, but I still had fun. And I think that says a lot about a fighter when you can see where you're at in terms of the skill level of everyone else in the beta, which is for me near the bottom, uh, and still have like a pretty good time in it. Um, that was one of the things that I enjoyed so much about guilty gear, which is kind of my first step into proper fighting game, um, playing, uh, fighting games that is. And this one kind of echoes that like 
it's got the buttons that do the cool things that are fun, but it's also got like 30 layers on top of that. So if you want to dive into everything about said buttons, you really can. And so the big, the big thing that they put into this is called drive impact, which if you see either of these characters, uh, have like that right there, ink kind of come around them. Yeah. Um, it's a pretty complicated thing that is basically one button. Um, the best way I can explain it is when you press that button, you get three armor and, and game sense terms. So you have to be hit three times or you can be thrown. Or if you drive impact and the other player drive impacts after you, then they will win the like drive impact head to head. And so that whole, that the whole game is based around that. If you see the gauges below the HP bars at the top right now, they're both like yellow orange. Um, and now it's green. Uh, Every time you drive impact, it uses a portion of that gauge. That's also how you do like your, your EX moves. So you can do like, that was an EX move. You can do a normal Sonic boom or you can do an EX Sonic boom, which will hit twice. And so that's all kind of caked into one bar as well as the super bars at the bottom. They're two different things. And so it's basically just like this, this like, well, if you drive impact me, I'm going to drive impact you after and I'll win that fight. Or if you drive impact I'm going to make sure that I'm ready to throw you so that it completely nullifies your drive impact. Um, and it's just kind of back and forth with that on top of a normal fighting game when it comes to street fighter. Uh, there's a lot of discussion on Twitter right now within the fan base on if they enjoy it or not. Some people hate it. Some people like it. It's incredibly frustrating as a brand new player when you don't understand what to do against it, because essentially if you don't react to it, whatever you do gets nullified and they just get in. And so it makes like people that just sit there and block nonstop able to not do that anymore. It essentially makes it very, very open in terms of like the combat. You can still block, but if you go up and drive impact, you're going to break them. Um, Oh, drive impact breaks through block. Yeah. Yeah. It opens them up essentially. And so you can kind of do what you want after that. So you can drive impact into a super if it, if it like connects and lands. Um, and oh. it also gives you three armor so you can take like a hit or two unless they're doing like really fast or they're like light punching. Um, doesn't that put characters that are slower at a huge disadvantage to the base game mechanic? Somewhat. You can still light punch, light punch, drive impact, or just like triple light punch. There's ways to get through it. And that's part okay. of the, like the game, right? Is like figuring out how it's all going to work. Like right there, he attacked me. I like took the blow, but still was going towards him. And so it opened him up and I was able to do whatever I want. I'm not very good. So my follow-ups are pretty dog shit at this point. This is like the first day. Now when that happens, I'll go up and like super them right afterwards. So it gets a real big punish uh, and gets a lot more damage for me. Um, But it's all just one button. So like anyone can do that. And I think for people that don't play fighting games, they're going to really enjoy that aspect of it. They're also going to get really easily frustrated with it because you just walk up and press a button and it like starts the drive impact situation. Um, there's only eight characters uh, in the closed beta. Um, I think on launch there's 18, 16. There's a lot. Um, what is I, launch? Do we know the official date? They have not said anything. There's 20, 18, I think it launched with 22 with DLC or something like that. They haven't said anything about launch. No one, no one oh. knows. A lot of people are thinking February. Um, for what it's worth, oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, right. You know, there's no other games coming out. February. <laughs> yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah. Um, for what it's worth, and this is not me saying this, this is uh, words from like Maximilian dude and a lot of the other, um, like fighting game aficionados of Twitch. Uh, they're all saying that like this beta is better than most fully released fighting games. Like just the amount of stuff in it and the way that it all works. There's been very little issues. Um, the first day there was like some weird connection issue that an error would pop up, but you would still be able to do everything that's completely gone. Now they fixed that very quick. Um, and everything works and it's just snappy. And like, I can go up and walk up to a, uh, I'll try to find some footage of the lobby. Um, they have like a full lobby where there's up to like 60 people in real time, just walking around and they'll walk up to an arcade cabinet, sit down at it. And you can just walk over to it, press a button, press spectate. And within 20 seconds, you're spectating that match. Like it just goes and it works. And that's awesome uh, to be able to have all of that functionality. 
Um, you can search people. You can follow players so that when they play a game or, or play any matches, you can go and grab their replays and just watch them very quickly. And that all is like in their first closed beta, uh, which, which is pretty good. Like it, it, that's a, that's a feat within the fighting game world, especially with where street fighter five launched, which was everything I just said, the complete opposite, right? Like it was just a dog shit, absolute awful launch, uh, for that game. Whenever it came out four or five years ago. Um, so, uh, I've seen it a few times in chat. Yeah. Char- uh, character creation. Yeah. Let me see if I can find what? some footage of that. What uh, is that? You actually like, it's like, like so... a, a smash brothers, like me fighter. You can create whatever. Yeah. Let us do it here at the beginning. There it is. That's my character. <laughs> Sweet mother of Jesus, man. <laughs> you know? I, uh, I, I made a great one. You done pulled a lyric. I did. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a winner right there. It's a lot of fun. Uh, the character creation is very robust. And so this is the lobby, right? And so everyone can just go up here and, and play games and the full game. Oh yeah. What? Tell me about the lobby. Cause I, I saw, I think I saw your tweet about it. <laughs> yeah. The, the lobby system is great right now in the beta. There's no way to like jump into a practice mode solo there's no solo training it's just not unlocked and so in order to get into solo training you have to go up to one of these machines and just go and like start playing if someone sits down on the opposite side of the machine it immediately throws you into a match against them and so for people that are wanting to uh go into training mode and like test your buttons learn a character whatever you have to kind of just hope that no one challenges you the best way to do that (laughs) is by going to a lobby where there's like no one in it if you don't know that, like, like last night, there was someone who was just like cursing up a storm in that all chat right there because people just kept challenging him. And he was like, let me fucking train. Like, I don't want to fight any of you people. Stop it. You're fucking, it, it, it was going off. It was a, it was a long process. Um, but you just go to a lobby where there's no one sitting in it. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in here. You can do these like silly moves. You can do all the like big street fighter famous moves in the lobby. It doesn't do anything. It just makes your character react said way. That's uh that's Justin Wong right there. Um, I was able to like type in okay. his name uh, and find him while he was streaming. And so then I spammed him with the tokens naturally. Uh, <laughs> uh, of course, of course. That's what you do. Yeah. Yeah. As, as one does. Yeah. And there's ways now, to customize your cr- character as well. You can get, I got like cat mittens. You can get hats. You can get, there's a ton of stuff that they're going to throw into the game when it comes to that character customization. And you can, you can fight with these people that you create. So not in the beta In the beta you play as like the, the, you know, the guiles, the reuse, the kins, um, in the full game, there will be a single player component where you're literally running around like a city and like challenging people just as your character. Uh, and you'll take on other moves from whoever you're training with or whoever you want to train with something like that. Uh, but you can. You just do stuff like this and just be an ass. Well, <laughs> when you describe that that mode, it's like I just I just picked the the the, the story mode or whatever. I just picked you going up to like this flower shop, and being like you, and then you just beat the shit out of this person <laughs> who sells flowers. Like you win. You should feel bad though. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know the uh, the extent to like in the story, if you can just walk up to any NPC and challenge them, or if it's said NPCs, they haven't, they released some information about that. I don't, I don't recall exactly everything. Um, Oh dude, I thought that was just your, your packs, but those are, those are some jugs. You got some titties. Uh, this is a male avatar. I I think I'm rocking. Is it? Okay. Yeah. I think it's just like the the chest is like massive, but like there's, People have like insane, like they'll have giant, super tall characters, with like super tiny hands. Uh, they'll have Slenderman walking around. There's all that type of stuff. Um, have they done any? Uh, have you seen any celebrities yet? Like they do with the Mies? <laughs> you actually just like, helicopter. Yeah, you just helicopter like Michael also. Jackson. Like, I haven't like, seen, I've any seen any of all that. No. Of different Mies, yeah. You will okay. totally like the the customization. If I roll back the VOD here, it is uh, very very in depth. Like you can, there are, there, there's a slight, there's a screen at the end of character creation that shows every slider and it's probably over like 70, 80 sliders that you have the option to, to mess with. 
um, it, it seems pretty in depth. And so you will totally see, uh, in, in the beta, you can only make one. So that's probably why you don't see that many right now. I think in the full game, you'll be able to edit your character whenever, and you'll see like a billion, like I'm going to make Sonic. I'm going to make blah, blah, blah. I'm going to yeah. make X, Y, Z character. Yeah. You'll sure, see. Okay. That. Okay. That's awesome. It's cool. Uh, I just had a thought. If you took, if you took that, the character you had there and yeah. you took their hair, uh, Take the mustache away and, and do their hair like the make their hair the same color as their skin. Yeah, it looks like one of those like MMA like stand up guys that with the no rock. arms. Oh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, exactly. the, like the punching dummy. Exactly. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot going on in that. Uh, I'm trying to see if I can find that screen that has everything, but it's it was probably so quick that I won't be able to. Um, yeah. Anyways. So I have a question for you. Do, you. do like you said, there's like you know simple button presses to do things that are normally complex yeah is oh, that that's what the you which that's the twitchcon intro sorry <laughs> that's me full screen there we go can we that's... circle back to that yeah that's who they um... had show up before the keynote uh you don't want to watch it it was really cringe it was like okay it was really cringe it was bad okay yeah uh is that what like do do the the, the fgc like pros like do they do they still use simplified buttons or is it is it more is it better for them not to use those or like is it just for people who who uh i mean want it, the game to be easier to control i think it's for new players right like essentially what okay. it does is is it makes it so like instead instead of uh having to hit uh high and low uh or sorry both high high punch and high kick to do a yeah. i think drive impact you just press one button and that's drive impact and so okay like there's two ways to get to the same end uh and it really okay. it's, it's preference right like most most yeah. um it's a i guess you would say it's a six button game is that right chad Chad's oh, gonna have to help me out here with the with the buttons uh and so you just have like two buttons to do w whatever you want whether it's uh you can make one of them throw because uh low kick and low punch are both throws or light, light kick, light uh, punch. If you press those at the same time, it, it throws. Um, yep. Yeah, that type. I remember of stuff. that. Yeah, you can just program. I remember, it I remember mashing the controllers, mashing uh, like um, Y and B. Yeah. Mashing uh, X and A. Yeah, and so on the the hit box, I just have two extra buttons on the side, and it. Okay. Yeah. And I, someone said that simplified controls don't uh, give you access to all the moves. Is that so correct? he's talking about a different thing within the game. There's okay. uh, like classic control scheme, and you have to go and find that. And then there's, it starts with an M. I don't, uh, modern, modern control. Uh, and that's essentially so like, you'll essentially, you will auto combo by pressing a button three times in a row. It'll just like, it'll do a combo. Um, okay. But it, it limits what you're actually able to do in terms of like Man, all of your though. abilities. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I played super turtly uh, once I learned to just... Guys, it's just, it's just, it's just like maybe if I punch it, maybe if I super move it, maybe if I kick it, maybe so, if I punch it again. <laughs> Guile's a charge character, just like May was. So I played it exactly like May from Guilty Gear. Oh man, where love the it. Sonic Boom is just a. I just love how that guy kept trying everything that didn't work, like yeah. over and Dude. over and over. Yeah, I wanted to come over and plug unplug your controller. That's <laughs> fucking. Dude, I look, my little it, brother. Stop doing low kick. Stop doing that. Uh, it it. It uh, reigns supreme in terms of the uh, the the time to tilt. Fighting games are, are number one for me. Uh, tilted real bad yesterday because of just random shit that was happening in game, uh, and it was it was a very fast tilt. So while I seem happy now, just Sonic booming the fuck out of these people, I put, I spent ten hours and then probably three of those is just like this motherfucking piece of shit. <laughs> oh fuck it, there he fucking. You're right. You're hitboxing, right? Yeah, I am using Hitbox. Yeah, it's been going going okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I didn't. I had a little bit of uh, like relearning because it. There's no uh, people would be like just hit Y, and on the Hitbox, there's no nothing's labeled Y, and so I don't, I don't know what the fuck that. I guess it's that button maybe, uh, and so I had to like get reaccustomed to it. But uh, there's the error that they fixed. It didn't really do anything. But once I got oh, reaccustomed to it, it was fine. Paws. Yeah, yeah, I got some cute cat paws. Um, <laughs> cute. <laughs> yeah yeah they're great they cost me three thousand points in game of the i don't Street know bucks. if i don't know if there's any 
nothing that I got in game from like a point system where I don't know if you can spend money is what I'm getting at. And I don't know if they have plans to have like MTX in this. They will definitely have DLC costumes because they did for any other Street Fighter. But I don't know if you can like spend money on stuff. Um, it will be most likely, hopefully, 100% cosmetic. That's also a really cool thing. See how he's smiling? In the versus screen, yeah. uh, in the versus screen, if you do up, down, uh, left or right, it changes your face. And so you can make like a weird grimace at someone. Uh, and it sounds like a really stupid thing, but when you're getting ready to fight and someone just goes, ah, <laughs> yeah, like, I saw that. that you're was caught off nowhere. guard. You're like, what the hell? <laughs> I forgot. You could sound do that. No, there's sound no sound. Yeah, no. Okay. There's no sound. It, they just make, you can do like a really weird creepy smile you can like grimace you can uh, look sad just like a fun thing that they added in because why not right it's it's funny i think it, Did you it's just a cool pick thing Guile and go with it by the way uh, i picked guile because he's a charge character just like may was in oh, guilty okay. gear and so i know how to right. down back forward pretty easily sure. um there's a character named jp that's in the final character roster that i'll probably play just because it's named jp yeah there we go i hope he doesn't suck uh, and I hope I don't suck with him. Is probably the more likely thing. I can't wait for the 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 tier makers to come out and JP. He's like at, at the like bottom. E yeah, yeah. God, I'm really fearful of that. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's supposed to, he's supposed to be like the evil character in the game, uh, is what everyone's saying from like just the imagery about him. Apart from that, yeah. I don't think he's ever been in Street Fighter before, so no one knows what to expect. So we'll see. I, I have a lot. Of, I have a lot of fun with Guile. I think uh, I was playing Ryu as well. Uh, Ken's really strong, Co. I know that's who you usually play. Um, awesome. Yeah, he's he's very strong. Um, everyone seems great, and and the eight characters that are available to play, everyone seems super fun and and varied in terms of what they can do. Is Zangief in this? I think he's one of the characters. Yeah, they they had that okay. unfortunate leak of everything, and then they put out some right. art of everyone. Um, he's not in the closed beta, but I. Th think he's part of the confirmed roster or unconfirmed roster yeah he will be there you go. i was like the 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 chain throw guys those are always my favorite to watch yeah oh it, and i mean when he grabs you for the third time it, you're pissed <laughs> you're done <laughs> you're, you're not done. having a good time i did that a couple times to people that just kept uh drive impacting because they didn't know that you could throw out of it so he would do like this super big charge up and i just grab him in the middle of it throw him do another grab him, throw him, do another grab him. <laughs> he learned not to do that anymore, <laughs> right? That's how you learn. You're helping learn him. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So it's it's good. I'm I'm really excited for whenever this game comes out. I, I hope it seems like they're ready uh, from like a, um, a systems um, level. I don't know if all the characters are done or, or what with all that, but I would expect that Game Awards will probably get a release date, if not sooner. Uh, and it will hopefully be sometime this spring. February will be really stacked. I hope it's not February, but we'll see what else. February. Yeah, it, it probably will just to get out there. But every Street Fighter game before has been February. Yeah, they've they've got history with uh, with that release date. So uh, this ends tonight at two a.m. Uh, I'll probably play some more. I played. God, I I ended stream yesterday at like three. When got some food and then I played for like another six or seven hours just grinding it out. After like four or five matches, I'd have to take a break because something was gonna get smashed. <laughs> and I, would, uh, I would return to it when I was cool, calm, and collected and and ready to ready to get destroyed. Uh by everyone in this game is so much better than me, uh, as well. They they definitely well, they invited folks that <clears throat> are bad, they invited folks that I think have history with Street Fighter, and you can definitely tell when they understand. Uh, that certain characters can do certain things from like prior games. Meanwhile, I'm just over there like, I'm just going to keep Sonic booming. And if he jumps at me, I'll flash kick. It worked, yep. it worked out. It did all right. It did all right. It's oh, very real, good. Just, just one minute. Yeah. Co, you played Dome Keeper, right? I did. Did you, did you beat uh, it on any, like, what's the difficulty that you played it on? Hard. Did you try the, uh, you asked for a difficulty? No. Okay. I think so. I just finally got my first win and you asked for a difficulty, uh, yesterday after like over a dozen tries. 
That fucking, I just wanted to commiserate with someone because that fucking <laughs> difficulty spike is insane. It's a, it's a tough game despite it itself. It was fucking you know? rough, dude. Yeah, man. Anyway, I just wanted to, to see if you had done it and, and like, it was satisfying, but I don't know what else to do from here because there's, I don't know how to make credits roll in Domekeeper and I haven't had a solid answer about it yet. So. <laughs> No idea. We'll have to talk uh, Dome Keeper on the 23rd because I'm out next weekend. Uh, I'm oh. gone. So no show next Sunday. Uh, and once again, no show on the 30th because I'm also traveling that weekend as well. So next episode will be the 23rd. We'll see you then. Let's do some shout outs where you can check out Co and Zeke. In the meantime, Zeke, why don't you start us off? I'd love to. My name is Ezekiel the third. You can find me at or slash Ezekiel underscore I I I on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube. And Ezekiel the third, all spelled out at, on Instagram and TikTok. Uh, thank you guys for watching, first and foremost. I appreciate you guys being here every week. And uh, secondly, thanks to my co-host, uh, Co and JP. It's been fun having, having this show back in my life. Uh, I missed it more than I thought I would. I knew I'd miss it, but I didn't know I'd, I'd be like, oh, every Sunday, like, <laughs> um, But So I'm glad to be back. Uh, if you want to check me out, I'm on uh, 10 a.m. Pacific, usually every day. Uh, except tomorrow, except Mondays, because Mondays I do uh, role playing, uh, 100 Club, uh, Cowboy Bebop inspired role playing uh, tabletop role playing game on twitch.tv slash table story. Uh, if you want to check that out, that starts at 1 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. But I will be back at 10 a.m. Pacific time on uh, Tuesday. I'll be finishing up uh, a 100 month sub appreciation game that uh, I ended up really enjoying. Uh, called Tales of the Neon Sea. It's a point-and-click adventure game. Really chill, really relaxed. Uh, good story, a lot of fun, a lot of puzzles. And then uh, got some sponsor stuff coming up this week. So lots of lots of uh, excitement happening. Thanks for watching. Co, Co, do some shout-outs. Sure. Hi, everybody. My name is Co. Uh, coming up this week, we've got a lot of Noptober stuff. We're going to be diving into some scary, scary games, finishing up Obia. And kind of just moving through there. We also got like a Curse Forest, Prognostic, Dagon. Probably check out the Go Home Annie demo. I don't think I've ever played a game called Kona. Maybe checking that out. Um, all sorts of fun stuff. So hope you join us for it. Should be a lot of fun. As always, thanks for watching. See you in a couple weeks. Cool, cool. We will indeed see you in a couple weeks on the 23rd. Got to check the calendar. That's when we'll do another drop frame. So circle on back there. We'll see you in two. We're out of here. Have a good rest of your day. Bye-bye. Mute.